Hello traders, welcome to another daily analysis. Today is November 23rd, Wednesday, just right past 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So first thing first, tomorrow is the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. So expect to have a very thin liquidity. Most banks are closed and most hedge funds are also closed tomorrow. And also Friday is the Black Friday in North America. So again, another holiday season. So pretty much, I would say the trading for this week has already finished by today. Really, you you can just wrap up, you know, today and the Thursday, Friday will not really have anything in this thin liquidity market. I definitely will not enter any daily trade during this time, but I might still trade for intraday trade, which I'll go over with you later on. So today we started lending session with the PMI data from French, German, and Europe for service and manufacturing. They all came out as relatively positive, but none of them are tier one data and none of them really change the sentiment dominant market as i keep saying right now everything is sentiment driven so euro is still very sentimentally weak and all these data are not helping euro at all uh, in north american station new york station we had a autumn forecast statement from uk and it was generally quite upbeat the market treated as very positive as because the uh, the budget has more than expected stimulus to boost the economy although they did cut the gdp forecast but they also increased debt to gdp ratio so that they intend to actually borrow more money to stimulate the economy and that's really the right move for them right now because they don't really have much uh, bullet that they can do in terms of monetary policy they cannot cut rate further as i mentioned the huge depreciation of their currency already caused them to have more inflation and that's not a good inflation because it's not inflated by the economy so they cannot really cut rate further but they do need to stimulate the economy so right now the fiscal policy will be the only good choice so generally speaking the market treaty as a very positive uh a budget statement a lot of buying power into a british pound uh, today was of course another us dollar strength day with you know dow jones making the new high in the financial market dax dxy actually hitting another new high today now the reason of course first of all is the sentiment as us dollar keep being supported so we saw actually uh, us dollar got the strength way before the FOMC minute, way before any fundamental data. It's really nothing to do with that. It's just people's spe speculation that US dollar is going to keep going up. Then the fundamental data from US, the core durable goods and unemployment claim also came out as very positive. So really supported the sentiment, which caused US dollar to keep kept going higher. And in the afternoon, the FOMC minute, it did not have, you know, it was a quite muted reaction. And the reason is because right now, pretty much the futures market has priced in a December rate hike for US dollar. Right now, it's almost 100%. So you're going to continue to see US strength all the way, really all the way till 2017, providing if we don't have any dramatic events happening, the US dollar will still be the strongest currency pair. A crude oil inventory today was also a surprise it was a draw uh, of course that helped support it to the oil market and the canadian dollar however a wti finished today with a doji so it's an indecisive day and the reason is because again we have another doubt over the opac meeting which is happening next week so another doubt to say uh, to the opac meeting to see whether members can really reach agreement as, as i mentioned it's really highly likely they are not going to reach agreement. Even if they do, it's really going to be short-lived. Uh, again, what happened to OPA is not really about the oil. It's the members have a deeply uh, conflict in terms of the country, culture, and religion. And that's what really you know, create a lot of uh, hostility in this OPEC meeting. That's why it's so hard for them to reach a deal. So now market again has another doubt to the way that they're going to um, have any, uh, really have any uh, deal. And that's why you see uh, WTI really didn't go anywhere for today. Now, of course, the strength of US dollar also pressured WTI a little bit. As you know, oil is denominated by, uh, by US dollar. 
An uh, equity market was a mix. Of course, the U.S. market has again keep kept going up, while the European market was actually end up in red. And uh, that's pretty much it. Commodity price have once again been picked up today, and you see the iron iron future actually uh, was jumped up. I think about one. I th I don't. I forgot how much percentage is that. But the iron future was once again largely being bought, and that's why you see Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar two commodity currencies were largely supported right now. So really, right now the strongest currency is still U.S. dollar, but we are see another strong. Uh, already fundamentally strong Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar are picking up their sentiment again so it's pretty quite positive another thing another one is the British pound was actually quite positive in terms of the sentiment now the negative currency right now of course is still Japanese yen Swiss franc and euro dollar Canadian dollar is supposed to be strong but right now we're really approaching this OPEC beating which is going to create a lot of volatility into this currency so let's go over our eight currency pair. But first thing first, if you take a look at hourly chart, you know, this is dollar yen. Today we have this large jump, you know, before this is way before the uh, the any fundamental data. It just goes up, you know, 200 pips for no reason, which is a strong sentiment. I actually trade this one, you know, intraday trade. I actually got in here. In this white line, so I'm actually in quite good profit. Set my stop loss to break even plus hundred pips already, and just gonna keep hanging there since tomorrow is probably going to drift in sideways. It's a Thanksgiving holiday, or we might keep going up, or we might go down. Nobody knows. But for me, you know, dollar is very very strong. Same as dollar Swiss, I got in this one as well right here. I also short your dollar. Again, you might say that I'm overexposed in US dollar, but I actually play adequate. Uh, I actually play logically with my risk capital, so I'm not I'm not really risking anything more than one percent into my US dollar trade. Right? I just divide it into different pairs. So I got in here, you know, another good profit for Euro dollar. Everything is in break even already. But just to show you, that's basic what happened today. So let's take a look at a daily chart. And the first thing first, remember this cable Aussie trade I was very tempting to enter yesterday? And guess what happened? You actually have a strong bullish signal today. So if I'm in this trade right now, I will be very, very worried because I don't know where it's gonna go. Tomorrow is a holiday. And then I will be very, very worried and kind of regret why did, why did I get into it? So good thing is that I did not get into it. And that's why I'm quite proud of it because technically it was really tempting. But fundamentally, I saw that there was a risk event for, of the British pound of the UK budget plan. So I dis and also there's FOMC minute. So I decided to stay out of any uh, British pound trade or any Australian dollar trade, basically because a strong US dollar is going to cause a risk on sentiment, which might help Australian dollar, generally speaking, but it might also pressure Australian dollar because of the US strengths. Now, uh, British pound, of course, the budget plan, I knew it's going to be a huge volatility event, so I decided to stay out. Now, of course, it might turn out to be completely different. We might have a very negative budget plan today, which we might see uh, a huge drop in a British pound. But that did not happen and I don't really care because all I know is that the risk was high so I decided not to get in and it was actually was the right decision. And tomorrow what's gonna happen? I don't know. Maybe we'll keep dropping. But the thing is that at least I'm happy I'm not in this trade. Okay, so let's take a look at our 28 currency pair. First take a look at Euro uh right just give me one second. All right, so take a look at the euro pound. So euro pound again, another um, down there for the euro dollar, up there for British pound. You don't really have much signal, as I mentioned. Now everything is too low for me to get in right now. I don't want to get in at the breakout. I really like to buy at reversal, sell at reversal. So I like to buy low and sell high. Now euro pound is not really doesn't give me any signal. I know you know most likely it's gonna keep going down, but I don't have any signal to enter right now. That's why I'm going to stay out, especially prior to this long weekend, long holidays. 
your Swiss, you know, another really indecisive day for your Swiss. Of course, it's a down day for euro dollar. But look at the tail. Then you also know that you know Swiss franc is not that strong either. Really, not, not don't see this thing goes anywhere for euro Swiss. Euro dollar another huge down day for euro dollar. You actually again reaching at very very low area. And last time you were here was the low was at here one point zero five nineteen or twenty. Was actually what you reached today at one point zero five twenty six, so not quite break out this lower support, but you are really at a historical low for now for this past few years. So the low is low at was one point zero four sixty, and I know the forecast was actually as low as one point zero four, so that's pretty much how low it might go recently. But just watch out, you don't really have any rebound for this. Dollar strength trade, and it's really well supported by the fundamental、uh, situation right now. But you know, really generally, you shouldn't see a straight line in currency trading. So you, you don't be surprised to see any pullback soon. But if we see any pullback, will be another good chance for us to enter. But as if for now, I don't have any daily trade to enter at such a low level. I don't like to risk at such a low level. So like I say. I still trade, still go with the sentiment, go with the flow. But generally speaking, I trade with this kind of intraday trade, hourly chart, and that's really give me a better opportunity to get into it. Take a look at Euro Aussie, another down day for Euro dollar update for Australian dollar. Euro CAD, it's another down day. Euro New Z, another down. It's sort of a dodgy, you know, very indecisive. Euro yen is actually an update, so that just shows you Swiss franc and Japanese yen is the weakest currency at the moment. Pound Swiss again, another update for British pound versus Swiss franc. Don't have any signal for me. If you're a breakout trader, feel free to enter, but for me, I don't want to get into any trade at this moment. Okay, but Aussie, as I mentioned, right now you actually have a quite good strength in the British pound, and just remember how crazy this is. This is really how the currency market work. A couple months ago, people were saying that British pound is going to tank because of the brick exit, and now that Donald Trump got elected, now this seems to be okay again. But of course, next year when they start negotiation with eurozone. That's the moment we're really going to see more clear picture about British pound, about UK in general. Right now, everything really is up in the air because it is really policy driven in terms of where the future is in for UK. Pound CAD again, another indecisive day. Pound New Z, another update. This just shows you how strong British pound is actually versus New Zealand dollar. And Australian dollar actually all have a quite strong update. Pound yen again, another update for pound yen. And really, if you're a breakout trader, you could actually realistically keep buying it. But of course, I will not get any trade、uh, today because of the holiday season tomorrow. But I'm just saying, in general speaking, British pound is actually stronger than Japanese yen by and large. So you could get into a trade if you see any opportunity, or you're fine to buy at breakout. Swiss franc Japanese yen is actually another update, so it just shows you the weakest currency is Japanese yen, no doubt about it. Dollar Swiss another huge update for US dollar. Dollar CAD again another update, and dollar yen is the strongest up currency for today. Again, you know you have this straight line for so many days, so really not surprised to see a little bit pullback. But historically speaking, you still have a lot of way to go, so still have a lot of room for dollar yen to travel. Aussie Swiss today is an update, another third update for Australian dollar. Aussie dollar, it's a do, it's a kangaroo tail actually. If you if you know,、um, not quietly, it does look like it. I don't think it's qualified, but just shows you anyway that U.S. dollar and Australian dollar is still U.S. is still stronger than Australian dollar by and large. Again, it looks very tempting, but I will really have to see. Get into more detail. I just don't think this one is a kangaroo tail.、Uh, let me just do a quick calculation. Okay, zero point zero four four eight minus zero point seven three seven three three 
and plus 0 0.7373 you have 0 0.7398 0.7385 this one is actually a quite nice uh, bearish kangaroo tail to enter it let me see if it's open and closed within actually this one is not a bearish kangaroo tail because it's actually more than a third of the candlestick but nevertheless, you know, I'm not going to enter anything today, but nevertheless, it does look very attractive if you want to see Australian dollar. I generally don't like to do that just because, you know, I have so much update for US dollar already. And Australian dollar, as I mentioned, is still a very fundamentally strong currency. So I don't like to go head to head with these two pair. I'll see CAD, on the other hand, might be a good buy, but not prior to the OIL, uh, the OPEC meeting. Aussie Newsy, another update for Aussie Newsy. Again, was actually very interesting because we were in this trade a couple of days, a couple of weeks last week. And we go up, go down, now we might go up again. Aussie Yen is another update for Australian dollar. Cat Swiss, it's an update. So does Cat Yen, I think. Yeah, it's another update. Newsy Swiss Franc. It's very indecisive. New Zealand dollar, it's again, I'm um, down there and New Zealand can. So, you know, New Zealand dollar definitely does not have as much strength as Australian dollar. But again, just looking at that, I don't really have any pair to enter today because of the holiday season. I don't like to risk anything. And if, if technically, what I really like to do is to short Aussie dollar. But that's just for technical. Fundamentally, I don't want to get into these two pairs, especially in daily trade. Again, yes, US dollar is stronger than Australian dollar for now, but because of the continuation of strength into the US dollar, I'm afraid that if we have a reversal coming in for US dollar, we're going to have a bullish uh, strength into Aussie dollar. And that's not going to work for this trade if you want to show Aussie dollar. But of course, Tomorrow, again, Thanksgiving, I don't want to enter any trade for daily. I will still trade it intraday trade, but uh, that's just in, in the intraday trade. Other than that, I don't have anything, guys, and uh, I wouldn't really suggest you enter anything by today, but you know, feel free to let me know if you have any question. Basically, that's how I really take my daily trade. Very, very cautious and very, very conservative. And I, of course, use a lot of my energy you know just to play around with this kind of small intraday trade so for example if you want to do Aussie dollar trade you don't want to do daily trade you know you can buy it buy it here you can buy Aussie dollar if we you know you can see Aussie dollar if we it goes to 0 0.7400 and then you can get a short and see if you can have another strength into Australian dollar if not, then it's fine, you know, this is pretty much how I play it, really play with the sentiment. But other than that, I don't really have anything for today, um, but feel free to ask me if you have any question. Otherwise, I will wish you a very happy Thanksgiving and Black Friday and a weekend. So I will see you next Monday for another daily analysis. No, actually, I will be back tomorrow to do another daily analysis and Friday as well. But for those of you who want to take over the holiday, then I will see you Monday for another daily analysis. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to comment or email me. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye.